Praise the Lord. We are Praise here the with Lord. yes. We are here with uh, <clears throat> Stan Strunk. I'm in Mankato, Minnesota. He is in. How do you say the name of your town? It's Gloucester, but in American English, I would say Gloucester. That's about how I say it. Yes. In, in England, in the UK. And Stan is a good friend of ours and, and uh, co-labor and partner in the ministry. We've been working together for several years, uh, both in the UK and in the United States. And uh, he is a missionary to Europe and uh, to the UK and uh, really a strong and, and blessed ministry. Him and Sarah are uh, a tremendous team. They've been ministering among the uh, Roma Gypsy people and many others. And uh, we had him here at our <coughs> Harvest Evangelism Conference last fall and had a wonderful time. And of course, right now, awesome. yes, praise the Lord. And of course, right now we are in the midst of the uh, crisis with the um, COVID-19 virus. And, you know, Stan and Sarah went through just a tremendous battle. Um in the last few days, and as he was sharing with me about this, um, I, I really felt that the testimony of what God did could be an encouragement uh, to many people. So, um, Stan, can you just give us a little background of what took place in the last few days? Absolutely. Greetings to everybody, all your listeners, and everybody who is watching this video. Greetings uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus from the United Kingdom. Uh, we were ministering, my wife and I, in a few churches uh, in southwest of England, in Somerset. And we were already hearing first news of this COVID-19 coming to UK as people were getting infected. Uh, but we still decided to go on with the ministry because there were no travel restrictions there were no uh, meeting restrictions. Uh, we did a uh, few meetings and we were meeting people, you know, having meals with people. And in one occasion, we were in one little town called Nailsea in a county called Somerset. And we had a meeting in the pub and I was sharing my testimony about how I gave my life to Lord Jesus Christ. And then uh, we left. We came home, and the next day we've had that in that little town, uh, they've heard some uh, people that they were infected. They heard of some people that were infected with this COVID-19. Uh, but we thought, well, you know, uh, the, it's a big place. I don't think these guys were in the park where we were, but you never know. And we returned home, and then obviously all the restrictions started to come, you know, in our country about movement, about travel, about meetings. And at the same time, my wife and I, we, we felt really, really sick. Uh, now, I had in the last few years uh, problems with a little bit chest infections. So I thought like this could be just normal, regular chest infection. And Sarah, my wife, she also felt dry cough. We went to our uh, GP, which is an UK general practitioner, our doctor. And she checked us, and she said she could hear a little bit of infection in my back, but nothing serious. And when she checked Sarah, she said, I can't hear anything. And then we, we were just saying, hopefully it, this is not the, the virus or infection. And she said, well, I don't, I don't know, I can't test it, but I hope not. Uh, and as we, we came back home, our physical state was getting worse and worse. Yeah. And my wife, I don't know if I want to pause here and you want to ask some questions, but I'll probably continue. Well, I just, I just wanted to kind of highlight that about how you weren't able to be tested. And there's so many people in the same position, they're having a cold or flu or COVID-19 and they don't know which is which. And so yeah. you're kind of in limbo there and the, the testing issue is a big one, I think worldwide. People don't really know and so there's really a lot of fear that comes along with that. So um, you were That's you right, went to yes. the doctor, but you didn't know if you had the, the virus or not. 
No, we didn't. And I must honestly say, my wife and I, we're not fearful people. We are people of faith. We, we confess healing over our bodies every day. Right. We seek the Lord every day. We, we believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. We believe that uh, the Lamb of God, uh, He died for our transgressions and also in, in His stripes we are healed. Not just that we will be healed. We actually confess this. We are healed. Hallelujah. Uh, so we are people <clears throat> of strong faith. I need to emphasize that before I will continue. But yes, you're right. At the same time, it was time of mental uncertainty because uh, the, our government here in UK was telling us if you feel you have a symptoms don't go to doctors don't go to hospital don't go anywhere lock yourself in your flat or in your house and stay at home and if it will get worse you would think you are in a danger of your life then come to hospital that is obviously mentally Humanly speaking, very, very difficult position because we are no doctors. We can't uh, diagnose ourselves. We can't say what exactly is happening. Uh, so I, I would say to people that may go through certain symptoms, that this isn't just a battle, you know, about our bodies and about our health. I think it's the most, most of the time, uh, mind battle, yeah. that raging in our minds. And basically... This virus and the whole atmosphere around it, I'd say, it's designed to uh, bring fear. Fear. It operates through fear and through uncertainty. You can't go anywhere. So that's exactly where we were. Yeah. So can you share with us then the symptoms that began to come upon you and then on your wife also? Uh, of, of course. Uh, as you know, all of you, you can actually check symptoms, what kind of symptoms people with COVID-19 have on the internet. It's available to everybody to read. Uh, there are also many testimonies on the internet of people that uh, had, had like a mild version of it or, or medium difficult uh, version of it. And they, we, we could hear and see their testimonies. Uh, so we were obviously trying to check the our own state and putting the symptoms and we went to our NHS website which is our national healthcare system website and there were a few simple questions and as we were trying to uh, fill the questionnaire it was about if we, we, came, we traveled abroad if we think we came across with somebody who got infected but how can you know right it's, it's like you can say whatever you want really that you know you can answer well we think we didn't meet anybody who got infected but we don't really know. So we just filled the questionnaire honestly, and the result was that we don't need to worry, we don't have the, the issue. That, that's what, what we saw on the website. But in our bodies, we could feel when we were reading about symptoms that we definitely must have some symptoms. But you see, this is how our mind was operating. We were trying to get to the point where we will not acknowledge that we have it. Because we believe that any sickness is coming from the enemy. It is not ours. We never identify. Many people make the mistake that they say, oh, my cold, my cough. And we say to people, don't say my cold, my cough. It's not yours. It's the enemy's. Uh, so we were trying to have positive attitudes. But at the same time, uh, our state, our, our physical state was, was worsening and getting worse and worse and worse. So my wife, she had very, very strong cough, dry cough for about a week. Uh, and some nights she didn't sleep all night. She was like literally whole night coughing. She, she had pain in her neck. It was really swollen. And I had the same symptoms as well. I didn't have a, such a strong cough as she had, but I had swollen neck. And I, I could feel in some occasions that the gap between, you know, when we breathe, the, the, the breathing tube was almost very getting smaller and smaller. And I was starting to be worried. Will I be actually able to still keep breathing? Obviously, you know, we still can breathe through the nose. But imagine if your nose will get full as well. If you have a cold in your nose, then what are you going to do? So I could sense how the enemy was trying to 
bring the fear to these things. And it was the moment when we totally decided to rely on the Lord. So when more symptoms started to appear in my body, I started to have this massive pain in my chest. It was like a pressure that I have never experienced before. And then I started to have pain uh, almost in my like kidney area of my back. Uh, it was like almost somebody kick you or punch you in, in your back. That, that painful it was. My, my hands started to, to feel pain. And at some point, uh, for a few days, I have lost touch in, uh, in my fingers. It was like, you know, when you sometimes sit on your hand and you feel like the blood isn't going through your, through your fingers. That was a similar feel. So I had also pain in my tummy uh, and massive headache. Both of us, Sarah and I, we, we, we agreed we have never had headache like that before in our lives. It was pressure. It was almost like somebody put some iron helmet on your head and, and push you and it's trying to squeeze your head. And also, my teeth felt really strange. I can't describe the feel, but at some point I felt they will almost just jump out of my mouth. And on my tongue, on my tongue, I, I kind of uh, tasted some kind of like a chemical taste. Chemical, you know, I can't describe that. I never had that before. It was like if you drink some bleach or something and it leaves strange feel, strange taste in your mouth. Mm. So that, that's how we felt. That were the symptoms. We yeah. didn't have a high fever, I must emphasize. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we didn't really get to the point that we both couldn't really uh, breathe. We had good yeah. breathing, both of us. But my wife, she had very strong cold in her nose. Yeah. She had a runny nose. So we were trying to pray for it as well. Now, you mentioned to me that there was two times you felt like you were fighting off death. Can you yes, share about that? I can, absolutely. Uh, it was one evening and I could not really go sleep. <clears throat> I felt attacked in my mind. And I think everything the enemy could throw at me, he just did. I, I felt, you know, really, really anxiety, fear. And these thoughts came to my mind. I may be dying. This is it. I may. This is my last days on the earth. And I started to share with my wife, and bless her, she's a woman of faith. <laughs> she said, "You are not going to die." I'm <laughs> mad. <laughs> <laughs> and so she prayed for me. Yes. You know, my wife. My wife. She's a great uh, prayer warrior, and she's flowing in the anointing of healing anointing. So she prayed for me, and as she prayed. Everything around me in the room and in my mind count. I, I, could, I could sense the calm and peace. Mm. And the pain and that pressure that was massive, it just eased. That was the first evening. Then the next day and next evening was fine, not, not much pain. It was, you must understand that this state we were at, it was like a waves, waves coming at you. So you felt well one day. And the ne next day, you literally felt you're going to pass away, you know, you're going to die. Uh, and then next day, again, the evening, same feelings, same pain, same attacks, same mind battle. And my wife again came, she prayed, she talked to me, she, you know, encouraged me, and it gone. But I must say that for... Uh, a few nights I did have a problem to sleep really it was like an attack on my mind mm -hmm. uh, and I can tell you one of the mistakes I made I, I was reading lots of video watching lots of videos reading lots of articles about COVID yes and and the Lord rebuked <clears throat> me and he said from now on I don't want you to read anything and I don't want you to worry about that so we stopped watching any news we watch time from time maybe once in a day 10 minutes just what's happening Keep uh, informed, but keep informed, but don't don't OD on it. That's right. Yeah. So uh, the night, second night, uh, same way as it came, uh, it gone. Yeah. And I recognized very clearly that this is a spiritual battle. Yes. Are, you know, founding ourselves at. Yes. 
Okay, now can you share how you guys fought this battle? Because I know that you did certain things every day. And yeah. uh, now obviously you're on the other side of this thing and you're feeling much better and your wife is too. Sarah is, mm -hmm. is well and praise God for that. Yes. But can you praise just share God. what steps you took to overcome Of course. Uh, what is amazing that Lord was not just teaching us how to deal with this thing in spiritual, but also we we sensed that we need to do some uh, uh, natural physical things at the same time. Um, and you know this is important because some people would only confess and pray. Yeah. But I believe God gave us a common sense as well. He gave us a wisdom, and He also gave us lots of natural uh, things that will help us in our lives. Yes. Now. Uh, we were obviously researching what helped in other countries and we were reading about uh, certain cases in Singapore and Japan so what we did the main thing we prayed we worshiped the Lord that was the main thing mm -hmm. and I prayed in the spirit a lot we prayed for each other anytime one of us felt like it's you know it's bad because we, we both felt really bad at some point Immediately, I laid hands on my wife, and many times during the day, I put oil on her, and I prayed. You know, James 5, when yes. you find somebody uh, sick in your congregation, call your elders. Yeah. I couldn't obviously call any elders. I was the elder in this household. I'm an elder here right now. So, I was praying for my wife. We were also, this is important, listen, confessing our sins. We said, Lord, forgive us, is there anything there? Uh, it was also a time when Lord was cleaning our hearts and our motives from lots of things. So I, w I was praying for my wife in faith. And I was confessing that word. I was literally reading that word from James. And uh, the prayer of righteous shall heal the sick. Yeah. If we pray in faith. So I was laying hands on my wife as she laid hands on me. We were applying oil every day. And the second thing, that so, so we were basically applying the authority that was given to us in Matthew 28, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus was given whole authority and then he gave it to his church. Right. Uh, but also, uh, in Ephesians, first chapter, we see Jesus is seated above all powers and whole authority yeah. is given to him. And then it says that he was made the, the head of the church. So I'm the church. That means if everything was put placed under his feet, Yes. Everything was placed under our feet too. So we were confessing these scriptures. And basically we were coming against enemies' lies through scripture, with scripture. Yes. The same way as Jesus, when he was tempted on desert, he used scripture against the enemy as a weapon. So yeah, that's right. uh, we were, I was saying to the enemy, okay, you think you weaponized this virus? Let me tell you, we will take fight back to you. Uh, we hear everywhere in a society about social distancing. Well, Satan, we are socially distancing from you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Of and that's, that's what good. I literally confess. You know, you know? <clears throat> just just one thought's coming to me here now, <clears throat> and and you're talking about the authority that we have. You're talking about, <clears throat> you know, praying the prayer of faith in uh, James chapter five. And yeah. <clears throat> you know, one thing I think that happens a lot of times with folks if if they pray the prayer of faith and nothing immediately happens then they just give up on it or yeah. if they try to use God's authority through Jesus Christ and the symptoms remain then they say oh it's not working so they just give up and right. the thing that I see here is you had a you had a battle you know for a few days yeah. I, don't, I don't know how many days but uh, but you continue almost like eight, eight days, eight okay. nine days. So you continue to use that authority. You continue to hammer the devil mm -hmm. with the word of God, and mm -hmm. you came out victorious. And I right. think that's that's there's a lesson there that we need to learn that uh, you know don't don't give up if you don't see immediate results. You continue to stand yes. on the word of God. You continue to to apply the blood of Jesus, and you continue Amen. to stand for your healing, which is promised to you uh, in yes. the Word of God. Amen. Otherwise, God is a liar. Otherwise, God... I, I came to the point, literally, of desperation when I literally said to Lord, Lord, 
we need to see the result right now. <laughs> yes. You know, otherwise we have we have no faith. And I said, I know your word is not lie. I know you're not the liar. And after we applied authority, as you mentioned already, we also proclaimed the power of the blood of Jesus, the blood of Christ over mm -hmm. our lives. And we were taking communion every single day. We yes. were taking communion. We still can take communion, but we, we run out of wine now, so we just can use a squash or water or whatever. Uh, and we still are serious about taking communion. It's important. We remember what Christ did, you know, on the cross, that he, he, he you know, gave his body for us, that he shed his blood for us, and we were proclaiming it, his power yes. of his blood over our bodies. And I'd like to share with you the words that God gave us from the uh, book of Revelation. Uh, and it's actually book of Revelation 12, verse 11. And it says here, And they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. So we were applying the power, that weapon of the blood of the Lamb against the lies of the enemy, that we will die, that we will be sick, that we will not recover. We were saying we don't accept that, we don't receive it. Amen. This sickness is not ours. It has no power over our lives. Praise and even God. though we felt we felt symptoms in our bodies, we said we are healed. Hallelujah. Symptoms no don't matter. Symptoms don't matter. And uh, as we were praying this way, I was reminded what John G. Lake, great evangelist, did once in Africa when they put the cells or so kind of like a virus of plague in his hand and they were testing with microscope and it died on his hand and uh, John G. Lake said the, this uh, you know, law doesn't apply to me so we were confessing the same thing that the virus whatever it is even if it's just a mild flu or if it's COVID-19 we were not sure what exactly it is it, no matter to us Right. It will die. And I spoke literally to that in our bodies. And I said, I curse you and I command you to die in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, I know uh, Jesus cursed the fig tree and it died. And yeah. how much more should we <clears throat> use that power and authority that he gave us to, to curse uh, sickness and disease that would afflict our bodies? Right. So. Amen. You, you went through this battle, uh, you applied the word of God, you applied the blood of Jesus, you anointed one, one another with oil, you used the authority, and uh, you know, it, it definitely was a battle. But you were telling me now there was a time when, when the breakthrough came and you knew that you had the victory. Can you share about that? Yes, yes. Uh, before I will get to that point, I will speak about the breakthrough, I would like to emphasize the other things is, or the other things we applied was, we drink lots of warm water oh, in our right. flask. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of warm water. Anytime I felt pressure on my neck and in my chest, I drink lots of hot water. And I put lots of uh, hot uh, uh, cloths, hot flannels on my chest. And that definitely helped as well. It took away the symptom of the pain. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. Uh, we also, anytime we can, expose our bodies to uh, the sunshine where we have vitamin D. Mm -hmm. that uh, strengthens our immune system. Uh, I was also uh, praying the special prayer that the Lord taught me in this time, and I will share it with you. Uh, but before I would say, I'd say, it, I felt that the attack in my body, it was almost like something inside of my body was moving from one part of my body, from my hand to my chest, from my chest to the left hand, then it was going to my tummy, to my stomach, then it was going to my back. I could feel it was moving around me. And I was saying, Lord, what is happening? What is it? And I had this uh, word from the Lord, and the Lord showed me that this thing, this virus is trying to find the weak spot in my body, but because I have confessed, and this is the prayer the Lord taught me in this time, this is what I've confessed. I said, the Holy Spirit breathe through my lungs and I was breathing and I was praying in the spirit and I was praying in the spirit and I was confessing the Holy Spirit breathe through my lungs the blood of Jesus flow through my veins I was confessing it 
And the word of God, the bread of life, flow to my intestines. I am totally healed. I'm totally whole in the name of Jesus. And I was confessing this. I was praying this type of prayer. And then we came to the point one morning when we knew something is, is concluding. We felt like there is conclusion. And we were laying on the bed and praying. We had closed, we, Our eyes were closed. And as we were praying, we were worshiping the Lord. My wife was worshiping. I was praying in the spirit. Suddenly, I saw that the Lord took me out of my body and he transported me. I could, I could see myself flying to heaven. And I, I flew into the temple of God. I could see the floor. It was like exactly described in the, in the Bible. And I, I was actually going to Bible after this vision, and I was like, wow, it is all there, really. That's what I've seen. And I could see the Lamb of God. I could see Jesus, King of Kings, sitting on the throne. And he looked exactly the same as he was described in the book of Revelation when John saw Jesus. I could see his long hair. You know, the wind was blowing through his, his hair. I could, I could see his fire in his eyes. And in his right hand, I could see the lightning and flash, you know, like a thunder. And at that moment, when I looked at his hand, I could see the, the flash coming down to earth. And with that flash, with that lightning, when it reached the earth, the words came. And these words came, preach good news, preach the gospel. I have given you authority. That was the first sentence I've heard. And then there was a pause a little bit. And then I could hear the second sentence, repent, repentance, and through repentance, great revival is coming, harvest of souls, and then the end will come, then end shall come. So that's what I've heard. And then I return back to my body. And that wow. was the moment when we knew one significant thing happened since that moment. I can tell you for sure. Since that moment, I'm in total 100% peace. <laughs> and God showed me that he is in control of this situation. When I was there in uh, this heavenly temple, I could sense that emotion that was coming from Christ. And it was something incredible because I could feel all kinds of emotions. It was love of God. It was tremendous compassion. But at the same time, anger against the devil, against the enemy, for what he's doing to people. Mm. I, could, I could sense that Christ is going to deal with him really badly. Mm. It's not going to end well for him. That was the, the moment, all these kind of emotions I felt in that moment. Wow. And so, so after this vision finished, and I was back uh, you know, in my room, I felt peace, and I have that peace right now when I'm talking to you. Praise God. And God told, me, God told me I was not surprised by the situation, and I am in control of that, not the enemy. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. <clears throat> uh, enemy operates through the airwaves. Ephesians 2 says that the, the spirit uh, in the air is uh, deceiving. He's trying to influ influ influence and impact all of those who are deceived by him and who are obedient to him. Uh, so we need to be careful. The television, media, radio, Satan is using those uh, to spread the fear. We need to use our power and That's right, brother. Amen. in the word of God. Absolutely. That's good. Well, what a blessing. And now you're <clears throat> feeling much better. And yes. uh, you're obeying the Lord's call to preach the gospel. I notice you've been online preaching already. and. Yes. And busy doing church meetings online, you know, you're you're uh, self isolating because of the requirements of the government, and and right. uh, which is good. I mean, I think we should we should follow the directions when we when we can, and when they're not contrary to the Word of God. But mm -hmm. it's not going to stop us from preaching the no, word. No, no. And it's uh, never going to stop us. Uh, actually, <clears throat> actually, the effect is opposite. Yes. Uh, it gave me uh, motivation to preach and teach even more, to yes. pray even more, to share the Word of God. It obviously brought lots of challenges because I'm not technical type, so I needed to learn how to use YouTube Live. 
how to how to upload my messages from my phone yes. to YouTube and how to communicate the message. But you know what? We have plenty of time here right now, so yeah, I, I learned many different things. <clears throat> That's good. And you know, I like you mentioned that that verse in Revelation. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word yeah. of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. They were sold out. And they applied yeah. the blood of Jesus, and, and they spoke the word of God. And, mm -hmm. you know, all of this healing, forgiveness, salvation, it all goes back to the cross of Jesus Christ. What he did on the cross for us is to take our sins in his own body on the tree, so mm -hmm. that we being dead to sins should live under righteousness by his stripes. We were healed. Amen. So he died on that cross. Yes. They buried him. He was dead. But then God raised him from the dead, and Jesus is alive. And then he gives us yeah. that life. You know, the life of God is in you. Praise God. Resurrection Amen. life is in you. Amen. Yes. To Amen. deliver you and to bring you forth in God's will. Praise God. Mm. Praise Amen. God. So, Stan, Amen. Yeah. would you just pray for everyone that's watching? And however Absolutely. You're led, you know, however you're led to minister. Uh, just pray mm -hmm. and let's pray for this great revival too to come forth that the Lord is, mm -hmm. is speaking from the throne. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let me say this before I will pray for you. Jesus actually warned us and he told us that this time will come when uh, all those things will be happening here on the earth. We know in Matthew 24 he was talking about the earthquakes, about the pestilences, about uh, the wars and the rumors of wars and uh, that the nation will shall raise up against the nation. We, we heard about uh, all the famines. And what is interesting that it all is happening in that one verse. Those events occurred very shortly in a very, very, very short uh, period of time. Uh, we heard about Australian fires, right? We hear about the uh, invasion of grasshoppers in Africa they are literally destroying the harvest in Africa and in the Middle East. And many people are actually experiencing famine and starving right now as we're speaking. We hear about this uh, issue with COVID-19, this virus. Look at what happened. This is actually the first time in the history where this uh, virus closed and impacted the whole world. Obviously, in old times in Europe, when the time of plague came, it also impacted the whole, whole world in that time. But now it's really reaching to every corner of this world. So we live in unprecedented times. The time is near. Time is near. Time is short. And what we have to do, we have to seek the Lord from all our hearts. Amen. If there's anything between us and the Lord, we need to confess it. We need to get rid of it. If it's sin, bitterness, somebody did something against you, forgive to that person. And just we have to come to, on our knees and cry out to God and give our lives to Jesus again. This is the time. And obviously the second thing is we need to preach the gospel. And the Bible says when uh, those events are described in Matthew 24, that when the gospel, this gospel of this kingdom will be preached all around the world, the time will come. Now, this time that is coming is the, the, the end, the, the end will come. That's the end of the church. It's the end of the time of grace. Mm -hmm. no, it's not the end of the air that will still be here uh, after the, I believe in uh, the, the rapture of the church. I believe the Lord will come for his church and we will be with our bridegroom. Jesus is our bridegroom. We are his bride. But man, you will, no one, you will not want to stay here on the earth. Because the Bible says in the book of Revelation, woo, woe to the inhabitants on the earth. Mm. Because the Bible says that Satan fall down on the earth and he is very angry because he, he's not, he knows this time is short. So right now we live in time where soon last Gentile will enter into the kingdom of God. Christ will come for his church and the, 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 the door of the ark will close. So I want to pray for everybody who listens to this message. Let us pray right now. Let us uh, bow our heads and close our eyes. 
And I want to lead you in a prayer. I will give word to Pastor Tom later on, and he will uh, lead you in a prayer of salvation. But I want to pray for you right now. Father, we thank you for the power of your word. We thank you that we don't have to be scared. Yes, thank you, Father. Because you, you warned us. You actually told us what is to come. We know. Yes. We, we're not kept in dark in blind. We know exactly what's mm-hmm. happening right now. Mm-hmm. We know that your coming is near. And Lord, we pray. I pray specifically for everybody who's watching this video right now. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, touch every person. I pray, Holy Spirit, right now that the power of God is released into their bodies right now. They need healing. I pray for supernatural healing. I yes. speak the blood of Jesus over you right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Receive it in Other the name than, of yeah. Jesus. In the authority that is given to us, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ and we say sickness, leave the bodies of everybody who listens to this message right now. We proclaim healing. And I pray against the spirit of fear because the Bible says that fear is the spirit. So, I proclaim spirit of fear, get out from people's lives. Go in the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. You have no power. <laughs> Go in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And I pray for everybody, just receive peace of God. Yes. Receive supernatural peace of God. Yes. As it says in Philippians 4, that uh, this is a perfect peace of God mm-hmm. that has nothing to do with human thinking. It surpasses the human thinking, human mm-hmm. understanding. Receive it. Receive the peace. Receive the peace. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let Lord is revealed to you. That he reveals his face to you. Now is the time to seek him. Seek yes, him yes, yes. All yes, your yes. heart. Seek him from all your heart. Yes, and he Lord. shall be revealed to yes, you, I Lord. pray. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we give glory to God. Yes, Lord. Lord. We give you glory. You are Yeshua HaMashiach. You are, you are Jesus Messiah. You are Son of the Living God. Mm. You came in the flesh. You died on the cross. You victoriously were raised from the dead. You are alive and you are coming back again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. 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 We pray in your precious name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Powerful. Praise God. You know, there may be someone watching. Maybe you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you did, maybe as a child or maybe a few years ago or whatever, and you've drifted away from the Lord. And as Stan was saying, now's the time to get right with God. Now's the time to repent, come back with the Lord and follow him. Jesus said, He that follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And you know, in troubled times like this, and when we go through trials like Stan and Sarah have gone through, that's when we need the Lord. My wife was saying to me the other day, I I don't know how people would go through something like this without Jesus in their life. And so if you've never accepted the Lord, if you've never been, uh, you know, in his family, or if you've been away, it's time to come back. I'd like to just lead you in a prayer. And uh, just just open your hearts to the Lord and let him come in. Just say these words. Just say, Dear Father, I thank you for Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. And today I confess Jesus is my Lord. I turn away from sin. I choose to follow Jesus. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for bringing me in your family. And thank you for giving me peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, if you've been watching today, uh, we thank you. Because uh, this is a couple that's doing something for the Lord. And we need to get behind what they're doing. So, Stan, I want to thank you for for visiting today and sharing your heart, sharing your experience. Such a powerful thing that God has done. And uh, I'm so thankful that you're well. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And we give God the glory. <laughs>